So I'm talking to Laura, um, who's one of our reading friends um, participants about <clears throat> books that changed her life as part of the BBC 100 Novels project. Um, so Laura, <clears throat> Could you, could you, would you like to show us your books for starters? Because you've got them there. I know you've got them there. So Anne of Green Anne Gables. Of Green Gables. <clears throat> can you hold it up a bit so we can see the author? L.M. Montgomery. Yeah, L.M. Montgomery. Lovely cover. And what's your other book? Your other uh, book Little is Women. Little Women. And the author is? And the author is Louisa May Alcott. Hopefully that's, that's brilliant. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you. So, um, should we start with Anne of Green Gables? So, when can you tell us a bit, like when you found Anne of Green Gables? How old were you? What were you doing? Were you at school? I'm assuming you probably were. I was in primary school, um, and I would say I was probably about nine I would think yeah um, when I first read Anne of Green Gables um, I was quite an able reader and um, I had a teacher who was very keen on us reading a lot um, and I was lucky to be um, in a classroom that was very close to our school library and wow. I went to a very large primary school and we had a very big library. Um, and because I was in that classroom, we were able to go and help in the library. Um, so I was one of the children who was able to go into the library sometimes in lesson time, but quite often in play times and things and help in the library. So I had access to books and I was able to look at the books and talk to the librarian about the books and I think it was her that kind of pushed me in the direction of this book um, and I when I read it I was kind of taken into this world that I um, absolutely loved um, and I was from Canada myself and came over to Britain oh. as a small child and my wow. father's family um, originated from Nova Scotia. So immediately there was a connection there, I think. Mm -hmm. And that really sparked my interest in this, this child um, that I mm. met in this story who seemed so real to me. So, yeah. I and was... she's, quite, um, she's quite an unconventional character, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Um, she's very, I mean, I, I remember there was a program when I was a child of Anne of Green Gables and she was a really feisty girl yeah. who didn't um who who wasn't afraid to go against convention so did you identify with her in any way yeah I think I think that was one of the things that I I liked about her and um I think um the fact that she was brave and um was prepared to go against convention and and also that she she um she was bright and able in her lessons and always aiming for the top and um I think that's maybe the situation that I found myself in that I was quite able in my classes but that wasn't always something that was held up as being um a very good thing um, and there were no sometimes people hid it almost didn't yeah, they hid yeah. the fact that they especially girls sometimes yes I, um, I think it wasn't something that was very sort of socially acceptable to be smart and to be doing your homework and to be um, aiming to be good at certain subjects and things so and um, something I remember about the book is about her hair it was a big feature of it um because yes, she was. Um, you could. She, and she had quite a temper as well, didn't she? And uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I had her temper, yeah. but I did talk a lot, so, <laughs> and she talked a lot. Do you think there was a way it, it kind of changed you? I think the two things that I took from this book, and and it, it, when we talk about the other book that changed my life, it, it's a common thread. The two things that I that really I came away from Anne of Green Gables with um, was that I really, really wanted to write. And she oh. goes on 
to write when I read the rest of the stories and I followed her story she quickly becomes uh, um, she, she quickly has that ambition to write um, and and I I developed that same ambition and, so and the other, it helped you become aware of that yeah 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 that that imaginative side of myself and that that creative side of myself yeah um and the other thing that it inspired me to want to do was teach um wow. so and 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 I did go on to do both of those things um that's so amazing I would, yeah and, and I now work in a in a school library and when ah. other children borrow this book I I tend to hand it over and say it's because of this book that I am a writer and I became a teacher and they that's lovely isn't it as well that it's kind of come full circle yeah yeah some a school librarian handed you that book as well yeah. and you're now yeah. um yeah so um the second book is also also has a write a character who writes in yeah so do you want to tell us about the second book Yes, the, the interesting thing about this one, I think, um, I mean, again, she's an unconventional character, Jo March, and she's um, not afraid to, to stand up and do what she thinks is important um, and, and to, to go against convention, um, which I, I feel um, called to me. Um, and I think they both are very feminist characters. They, they don't want to be held back by the conventions of, of, uh, that were, were very much there for, for girls at that time, to the extent that she gets called herself Jo because she doesn't want to be a girl and be limited by those things. Um, and I think that was, that was very strong for me when I was growing up. Um, so, but but obviously she has siblings and and Anne didn't have siblings. Um, so her experience of life was quite different as a child. Um, so I, I found that quite interesting, the contrast between the two characters, I think. Yeah. But I was probably a similar age when I read the two books. Just did you do you have siblings as well? I do have siblings, yeah. I, so did I, did you relate uh, any of the because there's a lot about sibling rivalry in Little Women, isn't there, and about yeah. the relationship between them, and um, did that relate to your home life in any way? Or? Yes and no because I didn't have sisters. Ah, oh. I only had brothers. So so yes and no, and and that I think that interested me what it would be like to have sisters. I I think I felt that my life might have been very different if I'd had sisters yeah. rather than brothers. And I think the, the feminist side of things, um, maybe because of my family situation, the boys were always allowed to do things that I wasn't allowed to do because I was a girl. And there were expectations on me that weren't on them because I was a girl. And I think, because I, I was the only girl. Um, so I, I, there was a strong awareness of, of the differences between girl and the boys um, in my family. So I think that that kind of feminist thread was was quite strong, yeah. really, for me. Um, so it was a bit of a pointer early on towards the feminist way of thinking about yeah. about things. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but once again, I mean, the, the writer, the writer in her yeah. and that creative um, I was story writing at, at that time um, and, and I knew that that was something that I would want to carry on doing. Um, and indeed, both both characters wrote for women's magazines, which is what I do now. Um, and and that was something that I was very sort of aware that that, that they wrote for money. You know, Jo yes, supported yeah, her family. Um, yeah. And, and that you could do that. Yeah. And, yeah. and when I found out that that was true for, for the author, that Louisa May Alcott did that, that that was a, a real thing, then that was quite an eye opener for me. So, yeah, I think that book was quite significant. Um, in And they both apparently quite autobiographical. Um, yeah. 
in many yeah. ways. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think I developed that understanding whilst I read them as a child um, for pleasure and for for just the adventure of it and the kind of to, to be taken out of my world and into their world as I grew up and then looked at them again. And that's why they've stayed with me is because I then started to understand the women behind these books and, and yeah. the, the history of this, the time in which they were written and what that meant to the, the women who wrote them. And then that kind of deepens your understanding of, of the book itself. And so that's meant even more to me. Um, yeah. And they're both time. like really popular, really accessible books. And yet they they have really strong kind of uncompromising messages as well yeah, yeah. Um, without being overtly political or anything no. I think anyone reading anyone reading them would really feel strengthened in in um, well as a as a woman or girl um, struggling in in anything really. yeah so because they still have good values about caring for people and doing mm. responsible things and um and a, all those values that we would want to hold mm. they're not militant in any way they're not they're not aggressive in any way they actually have a lot of values that that we would see as being traditionally feminine and yet yeah. they are uncompromisingly feminist and that's yeah that's, and, and it seems to be they're very much themselves they're their yeah. own people yeah um and they struggle with a lot of conflicting emotions and morals and situations but overall they're very committed to doing the right thing as well yeah yeah so yeah yeah